damage has been performed for some 40 years, but there are no real detailed guidelines regarding choice of conduit. Coming in, Jack, a paper looking at cabbage versus PCI, greater benefit in long-term outcomes with multiple arterial bypass grafting. Now, we're with the person writing the editorial comment here. Uh, it is multiple arterial coronary bypass grafting, likely better, but not yet a mandate. So Dr. Robert Guyton is chief of cardiothoracic surgery at the Emory Clinic in Atlanta. Now, there is compelling evidence of an advantage of multiple arterial bypass grafting, correct, at this point in time? I think, I think the evidence comes from institutions that have made it a priority and have developed the expertise in that area. And the evidence is observational. It is not a prospective randomized trial. We have that trial in process in Europe, the ARTS trial, which I think, the ART trial, which I think will give us some answers. But I think the problem is that, that if you push your surgeon to do something that they're not accustomed to doing, right. then you may uh, cause problems for yourself, for your patient. And I think that, that uh, the current article that I wrote the editorial about was from an institution that has specialized in radial artery grafts for the last 15 or so years. And they're right. exceptionally good at it. And in that institution, I would say, give me a radial artery graft and a mammary graft. But maybe not in that institution, don't give me two mammary grafts because that's not what they do. And I think that the point is that you look at your institutional expertise and you say, what works best for me in this situation, in this institution? So don't really change until you have proof of what's going to happen. Well, I think in 1984, 83, we got proof that the single mammary was important. And there was a dramatic shift over the next five years, and every institution learned how to do it, did it right, and adopted it. Right. And I think that that's, we're at the threshold of that, I think, with multiple arterial grafts, but we're not there yet. And I think that the benefit of arterial grafting is primarily the internal mammary graft to the left anterior descending. You know that combined with collateral flow, a patent left anterior descending can supply 70% of the heart muscle. And that's enough to keep all of us alive. We may not run marathons, but we can do just about everything else. And I think the second arterial graft has additive benefit, but not that much. Not so much that you should change the pattern of your institution to force that on surgeons that are not comfortable doing it yet. Kind of along these lines, you brought up as an example in, the, in your editorial comment the Arasi II trial. Yes. Do you remember what, do you remember what you talked about in that? Because that was a good illustration. Well, in the Iraqi II trial, there was a 6% surgical mortality in the, in, in the uh, patients undergoing surgery. I know maybe 1.5% mortality in the PCI group. Now, it, it, it is pretty clear that the expertise in performing revascularization in those institutions was in PCI. And if I were in those institutions, please give me PCI because that's yeah. an institutional expertise, and that's what patients have to do. All institutions now are scored. They know their results with regard to PCI and, and coronary bypass. The patient needs to ask, what are your results with PCI? What are your results with coronary bypass? And that needs to figure into the patient benefit equation uh, as we go forward. I mean, you say shared decision making includes an understanding of the skill and the expertise of the person doing the procedure and the outcomes reasonably available to the patient if an intervention is considered. We know this, we rarely verbalize it. Absolutely, I think, I think that that's very important. So uh, you're, you're saying there is a prospective randomized study that will shortly help illuminate this issue? Yes, Dr. Taggart in, uh, in uh, uh, London, a you know, European trial, the ART trial, the trial is completely enrolled. They quite uh, properly are saying we're gonna wait 10 years and see what the results are. Wow. But it's a prospectively randomized trial. It's now about five years into the trial, so in another five years we should have a pretty good answer from the ART trial, and uh, kudos to Dr. Taggart and his colleagues for carrying this out. And a lot of patience in order to do that for 10 years. Right. Uh, in this particular pair of papers in Jack, the, your take home message is shared decision making and do what you know. Yes, look at the local expertise and then uh, work with the surgeons, with the PCI operators, talk to them, find out what the local results are, what they're comfortable doing and what they feel good about. And, uh, and if that fits with what is reasonable, which should be at least one arteriograft, perhaps an additional arteriograft, I think, in everybody under age 70, uh, uh, which is what is generally the standard in our institution, but uh, I think that uh, the second arteriograft benefit is still somewhat uh, in doubt, 
And it may not be worth disrupting your life and your family's life to travel 500 miles to an institution so that you can get that second arteriograft. And this is in the September 29th issue of JAG. So please uh, check out Dr. Guyton's editorial comment and the original paper. And uh, as part of the JAG lineup from TCT, make sure you take a look at all the various interviews that we're doing from that and the online publication as the embargoes roll off. For Cardiosource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire. <laughs>